For those who don't know my story, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with Tourette's and I was on medication for almost 10 years. When I was 21, I learned something called The Secret and I came off the medication overnight against everyone telling me to stay on it and I had a spiritual awakening. I meditated for three weeks straight and my Tourette's disappeared and I created the podcast to simply preach about everything that most people have in their head but no one ever speaks about, which is what the twitching was. It was too many thoughts inside my head and now I have a platform where I can speak to people and they can get out what's in their head so if i could ask a massive favor from all my listeners upon looking at my stats recently it has occurred that out of a very humbling 730,000 downloads since i created the podcast back in 2019 that only 10 percent of you that listen have actually followed and subscribed to the podcast if i could ask a massive favor from you all that listen if you wouldn't mind just hitting that follow and subscribe button It would mean more than you can imagine and it really does help the show grow and help reach more people in more ways than you and I can even imagine. The bigger the podcast gets, the bigger the guests get. And my aim is to grow the show big enough that I can reach out to amazing people like Russell Brand, Joe Dispenza, Lewis Howes, Grant Cardone, Joe Rogan and have deep, intimate and vulnerable one-to-one conversations with them. I want to speak to the human side of people to show we are all the same when you get to the core regardless of how much money or fame you have. Right, Mr. Chris, join this call if you can hear me. I'm ready to go. <clears throat> Mr. Chris, can you hear me? Chris, can you hear me? Right, Chris, is that you? Right, ready. Hey, Oliver. Looks like it's working. Chris, can you hear me? Yeah. Right, cool. So, you start off and take it away. Yeah, man. Lots has lots has been going on in my life for sure. I mean, I I think everybody has had a, a really challenging last couple of years, you know, for some reason or another. Um, and yeah, one of the the big things that got me recently was the the whole crypto crash. Um, I I had a I had a lot of money wrapped up in Luna, which was. Uh, a big one. And it was all based on a a financial advisor I was paying, um, was recommending that. And, um, and then, and then I also had all my safety money in UST. And I mean, I, I did diversify into other assets as well, but the net loss was huge. It was like over a hundred thousand us dollars. Um, which, you know, I, I had actually grown, my portfolio up to like to that amount so it wasn't like I put in that much money but it was just kind of sad to see like almost everything that I put in got lost um, so you know there's a lot that goes through your mind you know as, as a man especially I mean I, I don't know what it's like to be a woman but I know as a man um, it's it's like a lot of uh, value associated with with uh, having wealth you know, and I could totally feel that. I could totally feel how I let my portfolio um, influence sort of the way I felt about myself. So then I, after after that crash happened, which was, you know, about six months ago, um, then there was just sort of like a lot of soul searching and a lot of depth that, that I, I had to go into myself to like figure out, okay, well, what do I really want to do with myself? What do I really want to do with my wealth? What do I really... Um, what do I need to work on in my character so that I don't attract these types of experiences again, you know? So that's kind of where that's one of the major things that's happened to me in the last little while. Um, how, how did the crash affect you, uh, Oliver? I, I know you had some, some coins as well. <clears throat> yeah. So I've got 60 K and my balance right now is, is around five or six. And um, I do think that the market is going to bottom just a little more. And then it will start to go up for the remaining of for the remaining years ahead. So I'm not I'm not too worried because um, I've bought in a lot of stuff early anyway, and some of the coins will just eventually 
go past what I bought them for and then go way beyond. And so the losses will counteract. But in your situation, you you haven't got a coin that's just gone down in value. It's going to go up. You've got a coin that simply doesn't mm-hmm. exist anymore. Now, you could say that Luna will gain more attraction and it very well could. You know, if, if you still have the coins, some miracle, they could turn it around and, and you could end up getting that money back. But if it doesn't, then fortunately, you literally have lost a Rolex in the ocean. Um, <laughs> and I think the lesson the lesson is that if you put money into something, that's going to get you great gains. You should also be prepared for the great losses. Now, I know I'm convinced that for me, crypto is only going to go up because unless I sell now, I've always ever gone up. Um, however, the reality is that with all these great gains means that there is going to be a massive loss associated with it. And I'm willing to take that risk as long as you diversify into other assets, not in crypto. So property, Rolexes, um, you know, setting up a business. That's crucial. Taking the money out and then putting it into other stuff that's still going to be there. Um, I look at it as you're going around the world and taking a pound off every person and then you're putting it into a house that's worth 300k and that's real you know that is real so i've 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 also learned don't just keep rolling into other crypto stuff take it out of crypto don't put it in the bank because that's just as worse right um put it into real assets that are going to go up in value and i think that it will you'll be fine if if you play like that yeah i mean that's that obviously would have been a great idea had i done that (laughs) um i mean thankfully i do have some other coins as well so my portfolio is not not zeroed out but it's it's yeah i mean it's like the huge losses of course just like yours um maybe probably even even a bigger percent but yeah it's um yeah you definitely need to diversify so that's kind of my my plan going forward is i need to have some sort of goal of like where honestly i just need to follow more mainstream advice like to just sort of have targets of like okay if it hits sort of about this target then i'm going to take some out and diversify it and and i just didn't do that um you know it's one of those things i think the the mental fallacy which is really interesting is like um i don't know i i guess it was because because i was paying somebody for advice and they recommended to invest in this coin and a few others, which I also invested in. And then this, the, the coins all went up so much. So I had such huge win percentage. Like I, my coin went up so much. So like I got some Luna for $6, for example, which is like, you know, went up to like a hundred and something. So I'm just saying like, because I had so much gains, it was kind of like, um, I don't know, I guess like I didn't respect it properly or something, or I, I didn't want to. I, I just figured, like, even if it does go down a lot, like, I'm still positive. So it was like, I felt long term, it's going to go up. So I just never touch it, even as it was plummeting, I was just like, it's going to bounce back, you know. So <laughs> I, I kind of allowed myself to, I, I guess I just wasn't being smart with the money. So I, I think it's, I guess there's a whole idea of easy come easy go. And because it, it went up so quickly, I was just like, just leave it in there and it will go up even more. Um, But yeah, I I think there should be some sort of increments that I pause at and take money out and diversify it. Um, See, I would say that um, you're to blame here, not your financial advisor, because he did his job by telling you buying a coin at six quid and then it went up to a hundred. So, you know, he did his job. What happened was as a human being, you agreed it and you thought, wow, if I've made fucking this and much this quick, then who's to say it's not going to keep going up? And that's the mistake a lot of people make. And I, I've, I've learned the hard way as well. Many, 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 many coins for whatever reason, whether it's a day pump, week pump, my portfolio of a coin has gone up significantly. And because in my mindset, I was in it for the long run. Let's just say I bought XRP at 20p. There's one time it pumped up to two quid. And my portfolio literally went to 30 grand. I watched it go from 30 grand within, say, six hours, and it went back down. And what I realized is that there is coins for the long run. But at the same time, if there's a if, if a coin pumps, it will go back down to exactly what it was. And you can cash out 
and buy it back at the price it was at five minutes ago, but you've got 30 grand to buy it for. So when there's pumps, it will always go back down, cash out, buy again. But if it's for the long run, you know, the aim is to keep it in. Um, but you need to have different mindsets. You need to have like a, a cash pile for when it suddenly dips, coins in the long run, like a business, so a business you believe in. And then know that if it goes up short, it will go down again and be okay to cash out. So many times, you know, I could have cashed out, even with airdrops and stuff uh, or coins that I've just IPO'd, they always go up significantly and they always go down even more. So don't be afraid to cash out when it IPOs because, yeah, down the line, the coin may go beyond what it's just pumped up to. So you're battling between cash now, cash later. Cash later doesn't really exist, but you might end up wishing that you hadn't of sold now versus what if it goes back up again so it really it's just life lessons like this isn't a a loss this is a lesson you know this hundred grand will save you millions in the future because now when you say put yeah more money in another coin once it goes up to say you know from 50k to a million you'll remember when you lost 100 grand in luna and mm -hmm. you'll cash out at a million so this is a hundred grand lesson and i think that the harder the lesson is financially the more of an impact it has on you. So yeah. you won't be convinced to stay in a little longer next time because you were like, nope, that's it. I know what happened last time. I'm out. Don't give a fuck what it goes up to. I've just made 500k. Couldn't give a shit if I make a million because that is the rule of the game. I've seen how it can go from a million down to 50p. I'm not going to fuck up again. Um, um, so I wouldn't be disheartened about it because oh, yeah. te technically, no. you know, if crypto doesn't go up, then I've lost 60k and I can give a shit. And most of this money was on credit card money anyway. So it's just a lesson. Yeah. And I mean, what, what you're saying is exactly how I look at it. Like I, 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 I look at all of reality as, as a lesson. So I'm, I'm just kind of interested to see what happens. And even when I went into crypto, I, I just went into it because I was like, you know, I got to do something in this universe, I gotta do something proactive. You know, I need to have some sort of a goal. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be a fun goal to learn how crypto works? It just seemed really fun. And, and it was fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm taking a bit of a break right now, but it but it's still, it's a very interesting, um, you know, investment opportunity, a very interesting investment area. So it when the when i whenever something bad happens in life you know i mean it's even bad needs to be put in quotes <laughs> um there's always a a lesson there's always something to learn and and to grow from and ultimately you win when you can learn the the life lesson you know even deeper than just taking it in finance like the way that i'm i'm taking the lesson is like learn patience in general, like instead of, um, th there's a sense of patience, like the, the, the re like you might think like taking out would be impatient, but actually taking out is patient because there's a sense that I had of, of wanting to, wanting to rush to like a million dollars, for example, which was kind of, which was, you know, it's a very typical goal. I, you know, it was my goal for my portfolio as well. It's like wanting to rush there. And I'm thinking, how am I going to get there quickly if it's not in crypto? So I, I, I didn't diversify the assets properly. Um, and I was, I was too much in one area. And so I'm able to go through this experience of the loss and be like, okay, what is the character trait that I need to change in myself? Uh, in order to become wealthy again, I mean, and I'm, 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 I wouldn't say I'm not wealthy, but I mean, my portfolio in my crypto portfolio. Um, so to, to get wealth in my portfolio again. Um, and so that's, that's huge for me. It's like just sort of learning the character trait. Um, and then the, the other thing with, uh, with the portfolio, and, and then taking life lessons from it uh, is, is that you can kind of, um, is that, I, you know what it was is like, I also 
pigeonholed the universe in terms of where the money was going to come from because my goal was kind of like i want to see if i can get this portfolio up to a million dollars which is you, you know like the universe doesn't play by the boundaries that you set like the universe is only interested in your character growth so i i kind of noticed like mental fallacies that i had of like like overdoing it in one area when it's like when when i when i could easily just listen and like you know take money out of it for a while maybe that's a smart move to growing the portfolio it's just like a counterintuitive approach you have to kind of go there's a, a a yang time and a yin time like a time to press forward and 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 go hard and then there's a time to like you know dial it back and rest and sort of maintain what you have so there's there's so much there's so much that i'm learning from this experience i'm actually really thankful for it yeah so um i i used to spend a lot of time in the casino trying to beat the roulette just by putting a pound on zero it's <laughs> all i ever did just put a pound on zero and then over time you might make a bit of money and what i learned is that you can't beat time you know if it's one in 36 essentially you're gonna have to be there for 36 spins times say 10 to make 36 pounds times 10 right so you can't push time money comes over time what i realize is that so many people next to me would would get a win and then they double down or they'd set their own goal of say you know two grand or whatever and they'd lose it all and then i'd walk out with 36 quid and i'd be the one with the upper hand even though he came in with far more than me and you know he, he lost more so then what i realize is that you're supposed to sit down when you get your money come in 36 pounds you're supposed to leave and come back the next night not stay there and then use that 36 pounds to try and make more you know it's almost like when you get lucky you should never have got lucky so be grateful so the fact your portfolio said 200k shouldn't be thought of thought of as well, wow, let's try and get to a million. It should be shit. I've got 200k. And then you walk away, you leave the casino, you walk away 36 quid, you cash out crypto, you walk away, and then you come back. So coming back doesn't necessarily mean to the casino. It means you take that 200k, and you buy a property for 200k. And then you flip it for say 300k. And then you take that 300k. And then you buy a piece of land. And then you do a real estate deal with somebody who builds on the land builds two houses and now worth 500k now you've got 500k and then you could say buy you know x amount of rolexes and then the next year they all double in value a million quid now you've got a million quid what you could do is you could buy a business and then in three years time that business is now worth five million quid that's what you're supposed to do not double down on the same pot that made you that money in the first place and that's what people do um diversifying is key things go up things go down spread out your basket and that will cover the loss like i put 10k in one coin that's only gone down to four thousand quid i've also put um 10k in one coin that's worth 600 quid 6k in one coin that's worth 50 quid so what you could say is that even though i'm going to lose say 20k if those coins don't go back up my other coin that i've got 10k and that's only gone down to 4k that just has to like triple and i've counteracted it so that's essentially the same as you know spreading out your, your your pots of baskets um the fact it's all in crypto is a lesson i've learned after the fact because i was in that crypto mindset um so that that that's a lesson i learned along the way so as soon as i've got this up to what i would call a reasonable price which in my eyes it's going to be 200k then i ca cash that out put it into property rolexes or whatever and then you know still faff around with crypto with maybe like you know 10 20k but I'm not solely focused on that pot anymore because it served its purpose. So are, I, this, is, this is interesting. You bring up Rolexes a lot. Are, are you, um, are you seeing Rolexes like watches, right? As, as a good business investment or in, investment in, of a portfolio? Yeah. So I think that, um, Rolexes are a very good, um, investment for a portfolio subject to you getting the right one interesting I, like i guess you you find that they maintain their value across time yeah um obviously there is different watches out there but you know m m most watches actually do hold their value if they're a uh 
you know a very expensive watch that's why lots of like mayweathers and rich people they've just got watches not because they they need to have 10 on their wrist but because they hold their value so oh, wow. the well-known thing about watches do hold their value but if you get the right watch then yeah it could um go up in value quite a lot that's so interesting yeah i mean I, i've seen all a lot of these types of things like there's also people who you know rich people um, who love wine collecting and they'll buy all these old bottles of wine that they have no intention of ever opening. <laughs> yeah, same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Because one day, some fucker will be like, hey, you know, I've got this 50 year old port in my cellar, and some other rich fucker's like, oh, I'll buy it from you. How much? Yeah. I'll give you 10K. And he bought it for like a thousand pounds or whatever, like 40 years ago. I mean, it's just certain things will always go up. Certain things will always go down, you know, land, property, you know, watches, wine, certain things will always go up. You just got to choose carefully what does. But I do think, as I said, crypto is the number one way to accumulate wealth across the world very quickly. But once you've made your buck, cash out, don't yeah. go back in. Um, some people for you to follow is Elio Trades on Twitter and Alex Becker and crone crypto so these are the people that are well 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 connected in the whole industry um they are connected with macro graph people so whatever they say ends up happening because they're all getting the same charts and they're always right and so if they say you know cash out they know something cash out if they say hold they're going to be right because they're all connected they're all part of the building of the whole networks and so follow those people um i follow those people um, as you said, you want to surround yourself around people that know what they're doing more than us, you know, graphs. If everything is followed by the S&P 500, how does that get affected? Economy, housing, petrol. So how does that get affected? Wars, inflation. So if you do the, the links going backwards, for crypto to pump, you need a good S&P 500. For that to pump, you need a good economy. For good economy, you need growth, jobs no wars and shit like that. And so if you keep going back, when one starts, the rest follow. And they have to all be in sync. All the troops have to be in alignment. So, you know, crypto's only going to go up when the economy sorts itself out and then the S&P 500 sorts itself out. And until Putin stops fucking about, it's going to be very hard, you know, before crypto starts going up. But when it does, we've got a whole new industry ready to boom. And don't be disheartened. So let's just say I've made a mistake. Oh, let's just say I've learned from something. Let's just say I've got 60K in um, my coins. Let's just say that uh, I choose to cash out. For whatever reason, I choose to cash out. I've learned something. Buy on a macro low, sell on a macro high. So I will double down. I'll put 120 in. I don't have 120, but the point is that I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not feared of fear. As Grant Cardone says, go bigger, go bigger, you know? If I was willing to put 60K in at the top of the market, why the fuck would I not put it in at the bottom? So I'd double down, you know? I wouldn't be shit scared to put 60 and I'd put 120 in. Does that make sense? You learn and then you double down. You don't let the lesson be the fear for moving forward. And that's why, that's the difference between somebody who succeeds and somebody who doesn't. You know, Trump, he went bankrupt, you know, lost you know millions and millions and millions and millions. And then he got more money from the bank, doubled down, and then he made it. <clears throat> and that's a story for most people. You learn and you double down. You don't give up. Yeah, yeah, you have to. And and there's there's so many wealthy people that that I've talked to or that I've listened to, and they've said they've been bankrupt multiple times, or they've said that their their portfolio zeroed out multiple times. And so it's just a part of the journey. Uh, every time you get smarter. Yeah, like entrepreneur or, or a businessman is a mindset and you can't learn that at uni. You've got to learn that in real life experiences. So every loss, you've learned something more. And so the more you learn, the more likely you are to be successful because successful people at the top only have got there because they've learned from themselves and from other people. So it's almost like you want to keep making, you want to keep losing so you keep learning because then that wisdom takes you to the top. So it's almost like, it's, it, it, it's the opposite, you know? When you learn, you're supposed to do that thing again, but learn what you fucked up last time. Do the same thing again, 
but don't do the thing that made you lose. And then you keep ranking up the scale. It's like snakes and ladders. You just got to keep going up the board. Um, that's why so many people who are successful, you know, lose it and make it again because they they have the wisdom that others don't have. Yeah. From trialing and error. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's absolutely crucial. Just got to learn learn from uh, your mistakes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, one of the uh, one of the other things that. I mean, we started off this conversation talking about like some of the different uh, challenges that have happened in the last few years. And we mentioned like, of course, everybody has been through some sort of challenge in some sort of way. Um, one of the other really big challenges that I've uh, gone through recently, which I found absolutely fascinating, um, was I broke up with my girlfriend of eight years, which is a very long relationship. Um, and then two months later we got back together and in that process i learned so much and one of the big one of the big things that i learned was uh, just how stagnant we can become in our relationships and it's 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 not even just in romantic relationships it's just sort of anytime you hit a spot in life where you're really cozy and you're really content um, you have to kind of look at that, or at least I find I have to look at that as kind of a, a sign of danger. Like you, you don't want to be too comfortable because anytime you're too comfortable, you start letting your character slide. You start, um, letting your goals slide, you know, and, and you kind of lose who you are in the comfort. So when, when I broke up with my, with my partner, uh, it took, it took about two months of us sort of going out there and, and, you know, meeting other people, um, just feeling the feelings of being alone. And it, it took us about two months for us each to, to realize individually, like one that we both, we both made big mistakes in our relationship. Like uh, to talk to the ones that I made, like I, wasn't working on my physical appearance enough. You know, I, I'm, I'm such a mental person. I'm, I'm very heart centered. I'm very much into, um, you know, spirituality, into investing, into philosophy. And sometimes I can just feel like the mundane world isn't that important. Um, but it, but it is, you know, and like to, to make sure that like, I'm keeping my fashion on point that I'm, I'm making sure I'm grooming my beard properly and regularly, you know, instead of letting it get a little bit uh, too big, um, or like too scraggly, you know, like, there, there's all of these little things, which, which I realized that I needed to do, and I needed to do them for myself, not not for my partner, but actually for myself and to take uh, pride in like, just simple physical things. Like that, that's one of them. And, and there's a whole bunch of, of like character uh, developments that I needed to do as well. Um, and then there's, there's like a, there's stuff she had to do. And, and I, I, I just think it's, it's so interesting how, how we let ourselves get comfortable. We let ourselves slide and then it, it takes something really big and usually really painful for us to snap back into into looking at what's important uh, holistically and, and not not just tunneling in on like the one or two things that we're really interested in. Uh, do, you, do you relate to that, Oliver? Have you been through any sort of similar experiences? Absolutely. So every, every, um, every week I cut my toenails and my nails, even if they don't really need cutting. Um, I uh, tweeze my nose hairs out every couple of weeks. I get my hair cut every three weeks, even if it doesn't need cutting. I will shave my pubes, my balls, whatever, um, even though I don't really typically need to. <clears throat> and as it comes back down to it, it all comes down to self-love and self-worth. <clears throat> so the minute you start letting yourself go, again, you don't need to do these things, but it's how do you feel? <clears throat> how do you feel when you do them? And then you've got to think others notice these things as well. And it's not that you need to care. It's just that you become attractive when you are happy, you know, and if you're happy, you want to keep moving forward and growing. You want to go out, you want to get massages, you want to get your hair done, you want to look good and feel good. 
anyone who lets their toenails grow tells me that their mindset is elsewhere, not on themselves, not on their, their own self-development. It's on other shit, you know? And so if you can't look after yourself for number one, you can't look after anything else number two. You can't look after the cat. You can't clean the garage out. You can't care for your partner. If you can't even be asked or haven't got the time or haven't got the thought to even trim your ear hair or your eyebrow hair or floss your teeth, yeah, it's all around the wrong way. So I always make sure that when I go out, I'm going out like I'm on show, like I'm a celebrity, like I'm being papped and people are going to be like, oh, he's wearing the same top twice or, oh, his eye, mono brow's a bit hairy because it tells me to check myself, you know? Yeah. People get comfortable and when they're comfortable, it feels good. When it feels good, there's no pain and therefore 